It's Nick Hacking here on South China Morning Post, SCMP MMA. This is Post Fight. Got two of my favorite guys in MMA today. Uh, I haven't seen them for a while in person. Back in December 2019, when I saw TL fight in uh, Kuala Lumpur, it's TL Tang. He's back. This time it's in Singapore, and he's got Ong Lion Sang with him to corner him again. Guys, how's it all going? It's good. Everything is good right now. Nick, you're the man, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a pleasure to chat to you again. Uh, Ong, we haven't caught up with you for a while. Yeah, it's been over a year since I spoke to you, TL. You finally got another fight. Paul Lumihi, it's going to be on Unbreakable 2 or 3, I think, one of the dark cards. Uh, it's going to be um, broadcast on the 22nd. Sorry, recorded on the 22nd, broadcast later. How are preparations going for this fight with Paul Lumihi? So uh, for this, not for just this fight, I've been training the whole year, 2020. And I was waiting for that phone call from one championship. So uh, I feel great, you know. I put in the work for one year already. And I know Paul is very uh, tough, a uh, tough opponent. So I have to bring my A game. So I cannot, I cannot wait for, for, for that night. And Ong, yeah, you're back in his corner. How important is it to you, Ong La, to have this, this coaching role and this mental role to TL? You know, you guys are from the same country. You, you, he stays in your house when he trains down in Sanford MMA with you. Just how much do you enjoy that role you have with him? Well, uh, you know, I want nothing but the best for him, my brother Tio. You know, I want nothing but the best. And I know the sacrifices that he's made. I know the hard work that he's put in. Uh, so this means a lot to me, you know. Um, he's he, he came and, you know, he came and asked for my mentorship in 2016, you know, so it's been a four or five years it's been a, it's been a long ride it's been a long time coming so i'm very excited and uh i i think you're going to see the best version of Tio on on uh on friday which will be broadcasted later Tio, you, you were there with ong and martin i think in october right for inside the matrix yes so you you've had an experience of the the restrictions of going to singapore yeah so do you think that's going to help you this time now having had the experience already of what it takes you know, the kind of restrictions you have to go through, is that going to help you prepare for this fight? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because uh, I went through it already and uh, the Singapore government is doing an awesome job now. We have more, a little bit more freedom, you know. So it's like... We couldn't we couldn't do this uh, last time around. Really? <laughs> uh, there's no way. We couldn't do this last time around. We, we got in, you know, uh, in trouble for trying to meet up. But... Uh, um, now, you know, besides, uh, once we, we, we both tested negative, we're allowed to go to each other's room and hang out. And uh, it's been very, very convenient, very, very, you know, relaxing. Yeah. And this is what you need, you know, during the fight week. You need your brother, you need your friend around you. So uh, it's awesome, you know. Yeah, just to get your mind off of, you know, the fight, you know, just to um, nervous energy, all this, you know, during the fight week is not good. Uh, you know, having to hang out with a friend, you know, playing cards, you know, and just hang out. It, it's great, man. Put your mind at ease and just uh, away from thinking about all that nervousness and all that, you know, nervous energy. So it's great. I suppose it helps you with the training as well, because that, that was also restricted. Uh, you couldn't leave your room. Is that right? Before and now if they relaxed that, how, how are the training restrictions? Uh, now they, they don't have that much restriction. We just went to the pool this morning, have some little light workout. Yeah. And uh, everything is great, man. Uh, compared to the last time we were here, everything is smooth. And I just have to put the show on Friday. Did you also want to have Martin fly over from Australia, but you're only allowed one person, right? One in your corner. Would it have been good to have Martin as well? Absolutely. It's always good to have my brother Martin and... Uh, Ever since he come to Send Force, uh, we are like a brother. He treat me as a little brother. So, if if it's my wish, absolutely, I would love to have him. But I understand the situation. I understand the COVID, and um, you know, I understand what is going on in the world. So I'm okay without him. And uh, you know, if, if it's my if it's my wish, of course, I want to have him. Yeah. Um, so, what have you been working on, TL, over the last? 
12 months. Um, has it been good to have all that time to improve really as a mixed martial artist? I know every time I talk to Ong in 2020, he said, uh, you know, it's sad I can't fight, but I'm just becoming a better martial artist. And there's, that's the silver lining to the, the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you don't have a fight camp, uh, you focus. I mean, when you don't have a fight, you focus on small detail, you know, and in martial art, those small uh, detail are very important. So uh, I have my brother here sharpening up my tool on um, every Sunday. He fixed my mistake. You know, we work together. So uh, I cannot wait to uh, uh, show the world what, uh, what I've been working on. You know, there's no specific thing that I work on, but we work on a lot of things on those small details of martial arts. He says every Sunday, but I mean, we, 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 our regular schedule is uh, six days a week. And then we get, we get, you know, Sunday off and we take Sunday as like an you know, active recovery and we kind of work the little details out. Um, the, you know, that, that's what, we don't only work on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we work every day, twice a week, but then on Sunday is our day off and mm -hmm. we can kind of like, um, kind of fix our problems and stuff, you know? Uh, 2020 has been great for for Teal. He um, he got to train and and be in uh, you know Martin's training camp. Um, like for me, uh, like it, it didn't show in 2020, but uh, I know it's going to show this year. Uh, the improvements that I've made or that we we've made, so I'm excited. Yeah, Ong, I've got to ask you: Have you got any updates for us when you might be fighting again, or when you want to fight? I think last time I spoke to you was November or something. You didn't really know, but you wanted to get back in there quickly. Do you still want to do that, or do you want to take some time off? No, I don't want to take any time off. Uh, <laughs> if they give me a fight on Friday, I'll do it too. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Whatever way you... but but uh, but uh, yeah. but I think uh, they're shooting for some time in the in the end of the fall. So they did they did give me a tentative date, but uh, I don't, I don't want to say it yet. Um, but it's uh it, it I have a. I have a couple months, so um, I'm waiting on that date, and hopefully I get a quick turnaround. And it's still going to be middleweight, right? Because I think yeah. last time I spoke to you, you said middleweight is the plan. Yep. I'm going to fight uh, middleweight, get my belt back, and then defend my light heavyweight belt. So do you know if you're going to have to fight someone first? I know you probably can't confirm to me, but... Would you have to fight another challenger first before you get a rematch? Is is that the line of thinking? Yeah, I could care less. I just want to get <laughs> back in there. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who it is. And um, Rene would be great. Rene would be a, a, a great. Uh, but I'm sure if he doesn't take it, anybody, I don't. I, I could care less. Yeah, I mean, when when did you guys arrive in Singapore as well? Is it today or yesterday? Yesterday. I know. I know you guys like to watch the fights. Were you able to watch today? And and will you be watching for your Samford MMA brother uh, next weekend, Michael Chandler yeah. in the co-main event yeah. UFC debut? Yeah, our boy Phil Hawes was supposed to fight too, but uh, he uh, yeah he had staff so. I was, yeah, I was going to ask because uh, it was a bit unclear what happened. It was on the fight a few hours before the card started. He pulled out, but they said he's going to be moved on to one of the cards next week, maybe. Yeah. So nothing major, just small injury. Major, like a little staff infection. So yeah, okay. Uh, what about Mike Chandler then? How do you think he's going to fare against Dan Hooker? I'm excited. You know, uh, I see a lot of hate online for sure. You know, against uh, <laughs> Chandler, but. Um, He's a he's a he's a gamer and he he's a performer, so I know uh, you know he'll perform. Um, but uh, Dan Hooker is a is a, is a like uh, stylistically he's he's long he's you know rangy great striking great take on defense as well. So um, we'll we'll see you know but I, I don't think like I, I don't think that um, it's gonna be like a blowout like. Some of the fans think, you know, Michael Chandler is a performer. You know, he's a he's an all American, uh, great wrestling, and he has bombs in his hand. So, um, yeah, I think Michael Chandler is gonna do great. Yeah, Tio, what's it been like for you training with Michael Chandler? Obviously, a former champion in Bellator, a very big name in the sport. Yeah, it's it's awesome. You know, at Sinford's, uh, my buddy uh, Nick Lance is also fighting on that card. You know. 
I have all the great uh, training partner at Salesforce. Uh, like you just mentioned, Michael Chetler, Nick Lenz, Harvard Byrne, Chess Kelly. You know, I have all the best uh, training partner. So uh, every day they're beating me up and helping me up to get better where I need to be. And talk to me a little bit about uh, your opponent, Paul Lemihi, uh, seven and four record. I think the last time we saw him was November 2019, uh, just before you fought. He was in Manila. He got knocked out by Li Kai Wen of China, I think. I mean, yeah, what are you expecting from him? Are you expecting him to, you know, he's going to be motivated, isn't he, to come back from that loss? Yeah, I think I think uh, Paul Lemihi is a great opponent for me. He's a great uh, striker. He's very tough uh, to finish. And he's, I think his record is uh, seven and three. And um, I cannot wait, wait to show my skill set with him. You know, like I just say, I, I have all this training partner that helping me out. And he, he kind of need the, this win too, you know. So that's why I think we're going to put a great fight and a great show for the fan. Yeah, as you said, he needs this win. He's on a three fight losing skid, I think, mm -hmm. which um, sometimes can be pretty dangerous. I think we saw that this morning with... Uh, Alessio de Tirica knocking out Joaquin Buckley yeah. at the UFC. He was on a three-fight losing streak. So do you have to be extra cautious with him? I mean, every fight, you know, you have to be cautious. And, you know, for me, it, I don't worry about him, you know. Alessio's our boy too, man. Alessio is a, is, a, is a good dude. Alessio's our boy as well. Um, he, he used to train with us, you know, at, at uh, Hard Knocks. Um, so for him to get that win is great. Uh you can't you can't begin to believe your own hype. You know that's the story of that. The more of that story of that fight, man. Sorry, I I, I cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. Yeah, Teal, what were you saying? Sorry. So, what was your question again? <laughs> oh God, yeah, just the, the danger of a three fight skid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's uh, it's I I didn't uh, think about him that much. You know, I only know know what I have to bring in the table. You know, so. Uh, I'm ready for whatever you're gonna bring. Uh, what, uh, what he wants to say is he doesn't care. He doesn't. He doesn't care. He's gonna get that win regardless. Yes, regardless of what what he's going on in his life. I have to feed my own family, so I'm sorry for him that I'm gonna go after him and take that W from him. Yeah, and and before the last fight, guys. I remember in, in the build-up, T.L., you, you had that rib injury and you revealed afterwards you came very close to withdrawing from the fight and it had it not been for Ong, maybe you would have pulled out of that fight. How good is it mm -hmm. to be 100% healthy this time? I'm presuming there, there's no major injury this time. Is, is, there, is that going to make a huge difference for you? I, 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 really, I really think so. You know, when you have those little minor injuries in the training and then my last fight, it popped again uh, during the second round, you know. If it's not my brother own, you know, I might, I might just sit on that stool, you know. But this time I'm 100% healthy. My body, I mean, I have a straight diet so I can focus on training, you know. And everything come, come alone and I mean, come a long way. And I'm, I'm ready to, to show the work, what the work that I put in. Yeah, I can't wait to see it either. Um, Ong, I, uh, I texted you, I think, after you, you cornered um, Linton Vassell in, in Bellator. Um, you know, and I, we had a bit of a joke and I said, uh, would you like to become a coach when you eventually retire? And you said, yeah, sure. I, I think I really be up for that. Is, is that still one of your plans whenever you retire from fighting? Yeah, I think it's my calling, you know, uh, he'll to fight the rest of his career with me in his corner, uh, as a coach and to become a better coach, you got to work on it too, you know? So, uh, when my career is over, I'm definitely going to, uh, transition into that. Uh, either full time or part time, but uh, it's something that I love a lot, you know. Uh, so that's uh, that's something I'll do uh, when when I'm done fighting. How long do we think you have left? What do you have a rough time frame of how many years you'd like to stay in this sport? When did, uh, how, how old is Anderson Silva? Forty five. So I guess I'm. I can double check. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can uh, keep going. I mean, what, you just turned 35, right? Yeah, I, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Depends on the body, too. You know, depends on how. Uh, depends on your uh, body and your mind. You know, I just recently had a had a great you know training partner. A great meaning Nate the Great Marquette. <laughs> you know, Nate is one of my training partner, and he just he's 41 now, and he's looking to fight in April. So, um, seeing Nate and seeing other you know. 
uh, fighters, great, great fighters that I looked up to so much, you know, uh, still compete at, 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 a, at a much higher age than I thought people would. Uh, gives me that sense that maybe I don't need to be retiring. I, I, I don't need to be looking to retire anytime soon. Uh, but we'll see. It really depends on how my body feels and how my mind is. You mentioned the spider, Anderson Silva there. I think he's still a free agent. Would you, you ever be interested in seeing him go over to one? And would that be some kind of dream matchup for you? That'd be cool, huh? That'd be super cool. But, uh, I mean, that'd be amazing, but we'll see. <laughs> I know, you can't say too much. Um, yeah. All right, well. I don't want just... to cross that line. <laughs> I don't want to cross that line. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, TL then, uh, I guess final question, just um, what can we expect from you then when we see this fight? The fans, if they've forgotten what TL, the Dragon Leg Tang is all about, what are they going to see from you against Paul Demi? You know, as, as for me, I will come to fight, you know, from the start to the end. And I, as I say, uh, I'm going to look for that finish all the way from the start to, until the end. And they're going to see a great fight. And as Paul is a great fighter too, so uh, I think we're both going to put a great fight. Uh, it's going to end with my hand raise. All right. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people back home in Myanmar all watching you. Every time we have you uh, on the show or interview, we just get so many of them leaving comments and saying, good luck, Ongla, good luck, TL. I'm sure they'll all be with you there, even if they're not there physically. And I bet you can't wait to put on a show for the fans, right? Absolutely, yeah. yes. You know, um, uh, we have the best, the strongest fan base in the world. You know, if you look at his page, you have over, over 2.2 million followers. Uh, no, it's three <laughs> something million followers, you know. So I and I cannot wait for them to put a great show, especially during this time. You know, everybody is basically stay home sick. So uh, I think it's going to put, uh, put them, it's, it's going to give them a little bit of uh Happiness. happiness you know with my fight and uh is this fight is dedicated to my people in burma that stay home lockdown you know yeah hey, there's only one chair in this room so it looks really kind of weird this camera angle looks kind of weird yeah <laughs> well you'll lower it down it look like it look like i'm, a, I'm bigger huh yeah, <laughs> yeah. the big yeah. gun from burma <laughs> yeah. big head and then like you're far back <laughs> <laughs> There's only one chair in this room, that's why. It's always great to catch up with you, Wong, and uh, great to speak to you again, Tio. All right, thank you. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, good luck for the fight, guys. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. <laughs> that's it. <laughs>